Hey guys, what's going on? This is Tyler here with Your Movie Fix, and we're going to be doing something a little different. Um, I've been doing some big changes and a lot of thoughts going on with what I want to do with my channel, and just for a couple of weeks, this is something that I want to try out where I'm going to be doing a weekly podcast with my friend here, Dalton. Hey guys, what's going on? So this is definitely going to be a little different um, than what you're used to seeing, um, just doing it in a nice, you know, real laid back, relaxed podcast format, format, but we can, we're going to do this on a weekly basis and that way we can cover multiple stories and go more in depth with them and talk, you know, for longer periods of time and just really dive into these subjects. So we're still going to be covering movie news, movie reviews, um, trailer breakdowns, whenever they happen, we're going to get to them. So we have quite a few stories that we're going to be going over today. Obviously, some big shakeups in the uh, DC movie community. A lot of fans are uh, really pissed, to say the least. We're going to be discussing Ben Affleck departing as the director for the Batman movie. Some more details that are attached to that. And also, uh, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. And quite a few other stories. And we're going to be discussing some upcoming releases for February, since we are just now in the month. So, let's get in with this first story here, with Ben Affleck leaving uh, as Batman. Now, the official statement that he made was that there are certain characters who hold a special place in the heart of millions. Performing this role demands focus, passion, and the very best performance I can give. It has become clear that I cannot do both jobs to the level they require. Together with the studio, I have decided to find a partner and a director who will collaborate with me on this massive film. I am still in this, we are making it, but we are currently looking for a director. I remain extremely committed to this project and I look forward to bringing this to life for fans around the world. Um, on top of that, before we get just right into his comments, Warner Brothers also had to say they fully support Ben Affleck's decision to remain committed to working with him and bringing a bat standalone Batman picture to life. So, Dalton, oh boy, what do you make of his comments? What do you think this means for the DCEU? Well, uh, the actual statement, whoever was in charge of that, beautiful decision making. <laughs> Very it PR. Very, very, very PR. But if we're going to be honest with each other, it, it's total bullshit. Like, we've known for several weeks, possibly even months before it was like publicly going, Ben Affleck and Warner Brothers going back and forth, mm -hmm. that, they, that, they were, that they were batting heads. And while it's, it's maybe at first seemed like maybe sort of passive aggressive, just talking, whatever, this announcement happened. And now it just got very serious. And I think that with this announcement, they're just trying to keep people calm. But there's a couple things in the actual announcement that get me a little, uh, you know, really mindset. Like, for example, uh, when when has Ben Affleck not been able to act and direct in the same movie before? I mean, I know that Batman's different, but it's not like this is a skill that he's never proven he can do. It, it, I'd kind of take this as a good thing because... We've been hearing months and months that I'm not going to make it if I'm not confident in the script. And again, going into another story, we just heard that Chris Terrio, who is an Oscar winning writer, he worked mm -hmm. with him on Argo. He did a rewrite for Batman v Superman, which was more of a touch up of what David Goyer did. So we're not going to really know what he is like on his own with writing a script until we see Justice League, which is what he did. But taking a property like Batman, yes, Ben Affleck has done The Town, Argo, um, even uh, Gone Baby Gone. Like, he's done smaller budget films. This is handling at least $150 million. Oh, yeah. On top oh, of, oh, oh. they wanted him to be a writer. He's producing and acting, but it, at least from what he is saying, there could be, you know, a million reasons at least going on with the studio, but I'm okay with the idea that he's saying that I want to be able to give the best performance. And when you're a director, you're, you're having to worry about every single little detail for two and a half years mm -hmm. with pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, and then doing all the press for all of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. is it better that he's he's admitting now before the movie gets started that I can't really deal with that pressure and if it leads to getting a better performance out of him how do you feel about that um i i, I agree with you that i'm glad that he is saying that look i want to give this good performance and i want to be able to give this character everything i have performance wise and especially when you consider the shape the demand's got to get in i mean he's in his 40s and he looked incredible mm -hmm. in that movie superman 
And, you know, so I, while I do think there is some truth to this statement, there are also parts of it. The one thing that really kind of gets me is the statement where he goes, it has become clear that I cannot do both <laughs> jobs to the level they require. Yeah. And, it, you know, I mean, it had sort of, you know, a little shade thrown at Warner Brothers. But but I, I, I'm glad it, that, first of all, I'm really happy that he hasn't completely abandoned the project. Yes. That, that would be very would, bad. Had that happened. Detrimental. <laughs> yeah. It, not only that, but just, you know, DC fanboy riots in the streets like it would have been horrible but with that being said whenever I would talk about the upcoming DC EU and people would be like well I don't know it's pretty failing I'm like yeah but we got Ben Affleck directing Batman though like we still have that going for us and you know no we don't but uh, I, I, I will say though I am glad that he has that they made this decision now and not um, closer and closer to the date that they were going to begin shooting which gives them more time to work with what they mm-hmm. need what about so we know that Jeff Johns and Ben Affleck had been working on a script. I think they announced this. Um, it was back at Comic Con, so it was two or three months after Dawn of Justice came out last year, and they said that they have already been working on a script for the Batman for the last few months. So that's been going on for a while. What do you think of Chris Terrio, Chris Terrio doing a rewrite, in which? Either it is an entire rewrite of the script, which I find a little hard to imagine, or using, you know, his go-to guy, Ben knows how Chris thinks and how he works, and kind of use him, like, as a script doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad that they brought on someone like Chris Terrio, but um, the main reason I'm glad is because I feel like Warner Brothers, while usually mm, the only issues I really have with Warner Brothers, like, they're a fantastic movie studio. The amount of, the quality of movies they usually produce every single year is outstanding. But when it comes to their DC movies, they like to kind of learn the wrong lessons. And, but I hope that this is just a sign that they've learned the right lesson because they brought on Chris Terrio to, to kind of touch up Batman v Superman. Mm-hmm. And there were still a lot of storial structural problems that clearly were not at Chris Terrio's um, grasp. Like he clearly wasn't allowed to change certain things. Yeah, because the wanted. story was at least originally done by Zack and David Goyer. Mm-hmm. So you can only touch up so much yeah. with the things that they wanted to make happen. Yeah, and I think that with a talented screenwriter like Ben Affleck and a talented comic writer like Jeff Johns, I think that you are right in that they're bringing him in to sort of be a script doctor on the project because obviously Ben Affleck trusts Chris Terrio with his life. Like, they <laughs> clearly have shown signs that they want to collaborate more and more in the future, and I don't think that... Because Ben Affleck has more power in the DCEU now. Especially he if he's bringing in Chris. Like, yeah. He, he's like, he's bringing him in to kind of save him because this Batman thing, it could end up hurting his career again after he mm-hmm. just built himself all the way back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so uh, I, I'm glad that Chris Terrio is coming on. I just hope that they let Chris Terrio be Chris Terrio, yes. if you know what I mean. It, well, I think with having Ben as an executive producer on that, I mean, he's basically the sole reason this version of it's happening Mm -hmm. and i've been saying for a while and with with as shaky as he's been with talking on kimmel off his comments during the press for live by night i'm like oh yeah we're working on it or we'll get to it when the script's done and stuff i mean i feel like there's no way we're gonna get more than one solo batman movie out of him at least as even as an actor we may see Mm -hmm. him again later in maybe another superman movie and justice league 2 but Mm -hmm. I have a really hard time believing that we're going to see him in a second, let alone a third Batman movie. And, yeah. Yeah. But, sorry, uh, I was just going to say, uh, I, I agree with you there, with um, especially with what's been going on now. Mm-hmm. I think the only way we're going to see him do more than one standalone Batman movie is if they make some adjustments to their quote-unquote plan for their universe mm-hmm. and uh, give him a little more freedom of what he wants to do. But unless they all of a sudden decide to do that, then I think you're right in that we might just get one one standalone performance out of him and just see him sort of sprinkled throughout the rest of the universe. Which would be unfortunate, but is probably the more realistic of things. But, you know, maybe I guess that was a little more true when he was going to have to be the one directing it. On top of, you know, all of his real world problems, like with his family, mm-hmm. I mean, the guy's got a lot on his plate. And if he's saying that, you know, I want to be able to just bring a great performance, it, say he does it again, but he's not the one directing, I guess I can see that happening. 
because then it's it, the, the load isn't all there. Mm-hmm. And I remember some interviews uh, back for the press for Dawn of Justice that Ben said, you know, working with Zack Snyder, trying to learn so much about how these types of movies are made. I mean, it's he said it was like an overload. Like, it was just so much. There's so many things that he didn't know that you could do. You know, he said Zack was putting in cameras in places he never would have thought, like, that you could do that with a scene. Mm-hmm. And... I think just doing nothing, no director has ever acted in a movie of this scale. Like, yeah. Nothing even close. Mm-hmm. So you can't really blame him for wanting to step down because on top of the pressure, which I think was just part of it, but it's mostly just, it's, it's, it's simply too much to yes. know that it was too many roles for riding on probably $200 million. It's just a little bit too much, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even back with, Chris Terrio, I think, I mean, I still love, I absolutely adore the ultimate cut of Dawn of Justice, and I think most people's problems um, usually kind of stemmed from Jesse Eisenberg, which, uh, I again, I don't, either people forget or they just don't know. I remember some interviews, um, again, back at the press for that movie, that what Jesse Eisenberg would do, he would do, he would say different lines and do different things each take. So, mm-hmm. He, he may not even been doing the dialogue that was written for him, but Zach just loved the improv of what he was doing, which was for better or for worse. I am I love certain things about his performance and the other parts that I don't like, as long as it leads into a more classic type Lex and Justice League and beyond, then I'll, I can forgive the things that I didn't like. Mm-hmm. But I think Chris Terry is a fine writer and doing you know some script doctoring on some taking all of the good comic ideas from Jeff Johns and incorporating the story that Ben wanted to get and just kind of make it and smooth it out into the screenplay hopefully it's for the better oh yeah hopefully and in this official release from variety um they said that war for the planet of the apes helmer matt reeves was in you know uh, that warner brothers was considering him for the the director now Ben did say he's looking for a director who will collaborate with him. I don't, still don't know that that necessarily means that he's looking for a co-director. Mm-hmm. I mean, because he's he he was writing the screenplay and he's producing and acting, and I think that's those are all already very big roles that you're going to be collaborating with a director on. So I still think they're looking for just a director, not a co-director, because mm-hmm. it'd be really strange to take a high-profile director like Matt Reeves and have him co-directing with Ben Affleck like they're they're not the Cohen brothers they're not the Russos like it's it just that would be strange it'd be a very strange move for them to do that but I think it's just a you know um just looking for a single director and so Matt Reeves was in contention so they say and then another report um came out that they were looking for Matt Reeves Gavin O'Connor who already worked with Ben Affleck last year on The Accountant on Denny Villeneuve who has done Arrival, Sicario, Prisoners, Enemy, fantastic director, and he's working on Blade Runner coming out this year, Um, Matt Ross, and George Miller from Mad Max Fury Road. So what do you make of these possible uh, directors? Well, I think there's a lot of good directors on the list, and I think that there are some that fit the sort of uh, tone and what Affleck wants to go for better. Mm -hmm. But um, And and then I think that there are some people who would look cool on paper, but I, you know, I don't know if they would do it. Like, for example, uh, Denis Villeneuve, like you said, fantastic director. He made some of my favorite movies last year. But just a couple of hours ago, it was just announced that he's going to helm the Dune reboot. Exactly. So, you know, that that's probably, just with that, that's that probably off the table. Which and, is unfortunate, because yes. out, of, out of those choices, at least, I could say that he's the strongest director. But, he again, he's done these relatively smaller movies, at least until Arrival, mm-hmm. which is... Well, it's not a you know high profile blockbuster type movie, but it's still a special effects heavy type of film. But Denny handles he handles drama and he handles a great story very well consistently. I mean, everything he put out has been nothing short of great. But like I said, it was just announced you know hours ago that he's going to be helming the Dune reboot, which th- those like intellectual type sci fi movies seem to be you know his niche. That's what he's going for, mm-hmm. and Dune and Blade Runner definitely scream that. But it would be really great to see him tackle, uh, you know, Batman. At least the directors on this list, he was my favorite. What do you make of Gavin O'Connor, who worked with him on The Accountant? That's what actually I was going to bring up. Um, the Accountant, 
there are some people who love that movie, who hate that movie. I absolutely adored that movie. Same. Not not only because of you know Affleck's performance and Gavin O'Connor's directing, but Gavin O'Connor made one of my favorite movies of the past ten years, which is Warrior, which was a great MMA movie, and they've collaborated once together, and they've there's no reports to suggest that they didn't get along in any shape, way, or form. Mm -hmm. So honestly, if they announce tomorrow that Gavin O'Connor is going to direct Batman, I'd be totally fine with that, and I think that Affleck would be okay with that because they've worked together once, and I feel like it would kind of be a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. You know, working someone who's previously familiar with, so. And I, I think you don't need you don't need someone like the likes of the Russos or Joss Whedon or Zack Snyder to tackle something like Batman. I mean, look, you have a David Ayer who did Suicide Squad, which he hadn't done anything quite like that as far as you know that that giant budget of a movie with that weight looking on you. I mean, it's Batman. We don't need him fighting Doomsday in space. That's, yeah. This can be a very grounded detective type story, which I want really bad. Um, also, George Miller, who was already uh, going to be directing Justice League back in 2007 or 2008, he's going to do right. Justice League Mortal. Mm -hmm. um, the big writer strike kind of killed that movie days before principal photography started. So he was really far into the process. You know that he's not against doing comic book properties. He's still kind of a pick of mine for Man of Steel 2, but mm -hmm. also Matt Reeves, he stepped in for a director that stepped down on Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. And War of the Planet of the Apes looks like it's also going to be pretty great. I'm a big fan of that franchise. I think Matt Reeves is a really fantastic director. I've watched a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. I really like the way the, the, the way he thinks is um, really good. But is there anyone not on this list that you're interested in? Uh, yes, and this is going to be a, a very, uh, there's, a, there's a couple. There's going to be a very, it's going to be sound far-fetched, but Affleck has also worked with a director recently who has, has a lot of merits, who I think would make possibly one of the most psychologically insane Batman movies ever, and that's David Fincher. Yep. If they, okay, b let's be real. If they announced David Fincher is going to be directing the Batman, every single movie fan would absolutely lose their shit. Everyone would go crazy and be like, yes, I didn't know how much I wanted this until now. And on paper, it's great, and he doesn't really have a whole lot going on right now. So I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but at the same time, I don't know if that's the direction he wants to take his career in. Uh, what what would you think on maybe David Fincher directing a Batman movie? He was my first pick as well. I mean, he really was, um, especially after Gone Girl. He's worked with him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they get along. Uh, I know that he also learned a lot from David Fincher. David Fincher is one of my favorite directors. Um, the only downside for me, if he happened to take Batman and, you know, a slim chance of hell, mm -hmm. would be that now he's not going to be pushing forward with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo sequel, mm -hmm. which absolutely love and that's what you can do you can make a, just an intense drama suspense type of movie for batman if anyone can make a compelling detective driven batman film it's going to be david fincher every one of his movies is kind of revolves around that you know heavy yeah. detective work a lot of suspense a lot of twists that's what he does but it's a matter of is is david fincher the kind of director that wants to get away from studio meddling type projects because the the last big thing that he's done was uh alien 3 which is his weak his weakest movie mm -hmm. does that stem from him as a storyteller it's hard to argue when everything else he's done is just about gold mm -hmm. which the alien franchise had its own issues with three and four and i know that fox tends to get uh, in the way of things. And I know that they had certain mandates that they needed to happen for three and four. Mm -hmm. So that's whatever. But David Fincher was also my absolute first choice. Um, some of the guys over on Reddit, they had a couple of other names that they had thrown out there that I also want to just throw into the batch. That mm -hmm. sounded pretty damn great to me. Um, Gareth Evans. Or they have Gareth Evans. I think they mean Gareth Edwards. Yeah, who yeah. just did Rogue Ro One. He's done Godzilla. He can handle those types of movies. And also Ryan Johnson of Looper and Star Wars Episode Eight, Doug Lyman, who did The Born Identity Ooh, that'd and be uh, Edge of Tomorrow. So what do you make of those? Doug Lyman, Gareth Edwards, and Ryan Johnson. Uh, of the three, I mean, I think the best director of the three is Ryan Johnson. But for Batman, Doug Lyman, for some reason, really stuck out to me. 
you know, I, I'm a big, I love the Bourne series, and he directed that first movie, mm-hmm. and they're, I mean, and while stylistically they're all relatively the same, there's still something in that first movie that, to me, is the best character piece of the three. Because mm-hmm. that's when, you know, Jason Bourne's first discovering what's going on, who am I, that's when it all begins. And I personally like his style more than Paul Greengrass, as far as the shooting. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I think that, you know, if you put him with Affleck, and especially Edge of Tomorrow was such a, I'm going to say it was a revolutionary action movie that came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2014, I think. One of the best sci-fi movies. It was a great surprise for the summer. Yeah, and you know he's sort of on a hot streak right now. And I think um, by giving him Batman, not only would you kind of you know calm the nerves of all the nervous DC fans, but it would also kind of give Affleck, I think, a new spark of light to work with. So that that one that one really interests me, Doug. Lyme. I think the only issue is that he he has been announced, and right now he's tied to Justice League Dark or Dark mm-hmm. Universe. Whatever the, you know, the brainchild of Guillermo del Toro. But we don't have a release date on that. I mean, we still don't even know when the hell Batman's supposed to come out. We yeah. don't know. I think it was supposed to be next year. Mm-hmm. But we we know that they've been waiting to get the script done. And then we just got this report. Script's done. They rewrote it, turned it in. It's there. So now we are really just waiting to see what's going on with the director. And I think they need... They need the DC fans are just one headline away from just totally giving up. Mm-hmm. Like we we've done enough to struggle with getting the general. I, the movies have done fine with the general audiences, but they need a bona fide critical hit. Yes, they, need, they do. Wonder Woman has to be good, and Justice League has to be good. They they don't have a choice, or this is all just going to fall apart. And like you said, Warner Brothers, it's like they learn the wrong lessons with mm-hmm. these DC properties, which is. So strange. While I have enjoyed Man of Steel and Dawn of Justice, I, I, I think every most problems with Suicide Squad pointed out, well, rightfully so. That movie has a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. What, and I don't... <sighs> Man of Steel and Dawn of Justice, I personally like. But they're controversial. Mm-hmm. The, I, we don't need a controversial movie. We need something that's great universally and wonder woman better be that it sounds like it will be it looks like it will be i know there was the you know a report flying around that the movie was a mess which is horseshit that movie is still four months away four or five months out there's not a there's not a final cut of any kind so i'm not going to take that as as anything Mm -hmm. that somebody says it's a mess when the movie's still five months out Mm -hmm. so there's plenty of movies where they're working up on them they're working on them like a week until the release, so you never know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, especially uh, which there Wonder Woman with director Patty Jenkins, who that's pretty much been her dream project since she was a little girl. Exactly. And so there's no like the report saying, "Oh, it's a mess." Like, had, had this been a week before the movie to come out, I might have got a little nervous. Mm-hmm. Like, but like you said, we're four or five months out. That's just some mad employee who didn't get a good paycheck. Yeah. Who Who knows what that really was? I'm not worried about Wonder Woman, but man, it's it's got to be at least really good like it it just i don't know that the dc fans can handle it which is so strange because warner brothers puts out so many good franchises with middle earth harry potter those are all giant budget movies they know how to handle them so what are they doing it's it's hard to say because there are all these shakeups between losing the two directors for the flash and now we know that it's getting a page one rewrite which if you're losing directors Probably a page one rewrite on The Flash isn't such a bad idea mm-hmm. because we still don't know exactly. I think that was slated to come out for 2019. Yeah, uh, I believe the year with Aquaman. But just bad news after bad news. And I don't know that fans can really hold over until all the way until the summer for Comic-Con to hear all the good news and see these trailers. They need to do something quick. Somebody needs to make... A statement they need to you know say who's going to be directing it just it seems like one bad thing after another and i don't know how much more people can take and it's getting it's getting ridiculous and a little difficult to defend this franchise because while i've liked what's happened i don't want controversy i'm, I'm getting tired of defending controversial things that i like yeah 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 no i i feel you there and especially something else that warner brothers just like you said they make other great films but for some reason their dc just doesn't seem to come together very well and i i think part of the reason that is is they like to jump on things early and announce it too early like for example whenever they remotely get something done like like a week before 
Dawn of Justice came out, they said, hey, Ben Affleck's going to write and direct three Batman movies. Yep. And then it was, <laughs> oh, he's going to do one Batman movie. And now he's not even doing the Batman movie. You know, and while I'm sure stuff like this happens everywhere with every studio, mm -hmm. they're careful as to when they announce it to when it's a done deal. And, and I think DC, they kind of just need to slow down with their announcements. Just wait till everything's under control and then start opening up and start saying, okay, here's what's going on. Because, you know, they announced their, you know, their Flash directors who both left. And this, the second one, the one who, um, who did Dope, that was sad to see him go. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Of course, like a director leaving is a huge announcement that's inevitable to not announce. But they didn't have to take him to Comic Con, you know. They didn't have to do those things when that movie is not even slated to come out for another three years. They could have held off on him directing that movie until they got all their problems sorted out. But since they made that announcement early, the problems they couldn't sort out get glorified because now they have public attention, which just creates more tension with everyone. So yeah, they especially just... with it being so far out. Yes. And I remember reading a report like soon after they an they announced. Like I think it was it was on a press call or uh there was like a meeting where Kevin Suchihara had said that yeah, Ben's going to be directing Batman and that press was released publicly mm -hmm. and I remember hearing a report that Ben was actually pretty pissed that he said that mm -hmm. because it wasn't it wasn't official, it wasn't a done deal. Mm -hmm. And then they end up throwing him on the panel at Comic-Con with all the other directors mm -hmm. and I'm sure it was a little tentative but I'm sure if it was up to Ben Affleck, he could have waited for that announcement. Probably after Live By Night um, yeah. would have been his preference. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And uh, the only movie that doesn't really seem to be getting any negative press is Aquaman. So Exactly. I, I'm, I'm uh, kind of really looking forward to Aquaman just because there hasn't been any negative press about it. And speaking of Aquaman, there was a little bit of news that we got yesterday that we now have uh, Black Manta has been cast. He's uh, an actor, Yaya Abdul-Mateen II. He's known for the get-down. He's a rather up-and-coming actor, hasn't been in too many things. But the general consensus is that he was pretty great in the get-down and some of the other smaller things that he's done. But just the overall production of Aquaman. And then there was also Deadline reporting that Nicole Kidman is in talks to join Aquaman. Who, she was also in talks to join Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. So her name keeps appearing in these you know DC news articles. So I'm sure that the talks are legitimate. Whether or not they get her, that would be great. She's a talent, so I'm all for that. But really just the overall production of Aquaman. It's the only one that seems to be going smooth. With James Wan, Patrick Wilson, Jace Momoa, Amber Heard, and now we got the villain. We haven't heard hiccups. Anytime that we've heard anything bad, James Wan gets on Twitter and shuts everybody up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and I gotta say, anyone who knows me knows I love, 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 love James Wan. I was so excited when it was announced he was going to be directing the project. And then as more announcements started coming out, like, oh, this director's leaving, this director's leaving, I got really worried. I did not want James Wan to leave Aquaman. And like we've mentioned earlier, no negative press. It's when every time someone tries to bring up something, he shuts them down, like you said. And the thing that, you know, about the Black Manta casting, I, I personally have never seen The Get Down, but I, I also have heard that this actor is fantastic. And while movies all the time like to cast, you know, relatively up-and-coming people to try and make them more famous, the only thing that makes me nervous about this person's casting is that I'm hoping that they're not casting a no-name just to make Black Manta a one-off villain. While that would suck, I don't know that getting a lower... T I, get, I don't want to say lower tier, but mm -hmm. he's not going to cost as much as someone like Denzel Washington. Yeah, yeah. So it could be a matter of that. Um, but, you know, they already have, you know, some high-profile guys like Willem Dafoe, Amber Heard. Um, Jason Momoa has been working his way up there. So I, it's not necessarily that Warner Brothers is short on money. I definitely don't think that. But if as long as they've cast who they think is really going to portray the character the best, James Wan seems to be really passionate about Aquaman. So I'm going to have to just trust with what they're doing with this movie because, like you said, I mean... Everything's been going pretty swimmingly for Aquaman so ah, far. Damn it. So <laughs> I can only hope that that keeps on happening because just, again, with bad news, bad news, bad news, you know, even Ben Affleck, there was just so much back and forth with what was really going on, so many conflicting reports, and now we know he stepped down. If James Wan steps down after losing two Flash directors and really losing a Batman director, then... 
you there's no choice but to point the finger point the finger at um at Warner Brothers mm-hmm. and, and what's going on. We don't on the surface all of this looks bad. All of it, it you're losing directors, you're losing writers, you're getting rewritten scripts. That looks bad, but we don't know how much of this has to do with appointing Jeff Johns and John Berg to lead the DC Films division. So these decisions could be for the better. Like I said, Ben stepping down because he thinks it's too much and he wants to be able to give a better performance and just focus on that, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Losing Seth Graham Smith for The Flash, I don't think anybody's missing him. No. (laughs) Um, Losing Rick Famuyiwa, while he is a talented director, we don't know why he wasn't able to commingle with everybody. We don't know. So I'm going to have, you know, some hope that these decisions are only surface bad. Yeah. And they end up being what's best for the franchise. Mm-hmm. So leaving all that Aquaman news, um, we also got this image released by Empire last week of the Justice League. We got Batman, Flash, Cyborg, and Wonder Woman. Um, just we, A lot of this we've been seeing, we've seen it in the little sizzle reel. Again, we haven't gotten a trailer for Justice League. That was just a sizzle reel of you know some footage that they put together for Comic-Con, but this is what we seem to keep seeing in any images released of them standing in this underground, uh, just looks like kind of a big hole. They, they mentioned in the, in the set visit that this is kind of like an underground system between uh, Gotham and Metropolis, or Metropolis and Stryker Island, and mm-hmm. this is where they're gonna be fighting some parademons, but what do you make of like their costumes? I mean, this is the best look that we've gotten of the four of them. And notably, Superman's obviously not there, or Aquaman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I I, th- I think that it looks great. Uh, it's a, it's a really great picture, and something that I'm happy with the picture is in the first trailer and in some of the, like the sizzle reel you said, uh, you got quick looks at the Flash's costume. Mm-hmm. And with those quick looks, I didn't know how I felt about it, but the more I look at this picture, the more I feel more safe and comfortable with saying that I really like their take on his costume. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, just Batman just looks like. Um, he just looks he just looks incredible i mean there, there's it's no tank yeah so also this looks like an actual still this doesn't look like a set image this yeah. looks like an actual still from the movie mm-hmm. with probably you know they work on things like cyborg who is a near full cg character while they could have just prepared this single shot i'm gonna go with this is probably gonna be pretty close to the final product of what cyborg is gonna look like mm-hmm. which i like it it was really hard to tell from that little bit of footage, but that was seven months ago. I mean, they've had a lot of time to work on this. Um, I like seeing the big four together. Uh, I'm really curious why Aquaman isn't quite there yet, but we also got that other image of them getting off of um, the flying fox with Uh-oh. all of them walking out with Batman in the armored suit. And that was also pretty good and looked... Uh, it's hard to tell if that's just a promotional image or still from the movie. This one, I mean, it's got film grain and everything, so it looks more official. Mm-hmm. Um, and Zack Snyder had some comments about the movie that was included in this article from Empire Magazine, and specifically about Superman. He does say that Superman does play a big part in the movie. His presence and lack of pre- presence are big story points. What do you make of that? Uh, I think it was a nice uh, cryptic thing for Zack Snyder to say. Uh, I, however, I, I like it a lot because he's pretty much saying, like, look, th- these guys know that without him, everything's different. And just how how they feel after the sacrifice he made is, like, th- I think that's what he means by his lack of presence mm-hmm. is, like, what, like, this is, like, their purpose for starting the Justice League. And so, obviously, that is going to have a huge impact on the team because it's kind of why the team's together. And um, and when he says his presence, because, I mean, everyone knows Superman's going to show up at some point. I, I can't wait to see how they're going to handle that. Like, I, I kind of, I'm looking forward to seeing, like, like, the reactions of the rest of the team when Supes comes back. I think it would be a really interesting thing to see. I think the return of Superman could really, I guess, make or break the movie as long as he's not just used to solve all of the movie's problems. Yeah, which, I agree. to a degree, he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Because he's Superman. He's going... I mean, you have the other people going against Steppenwolf and who knows if we're going to see Darkseid. But mm-hmm. I th- I don't think it's a mystery that Superman is probably going to save the day. Yeah. And much like Suicide Squad, the the lack of presence was was felt 
throughout Suicide Squad, and it was the entire reason they were formed. Like the, f- the first quarter of that movie dealt with, you know, bringing him up over and over again with the government officials about mm-hmm. what if he came down and whipped the roof of the White House off and came and took the president. That sort of stuff, and with the Remember Superman t-shirts. I'm hoping that we get more of his presence than his absence. I don't want to just see Superman in like the last 15 minutes. I Hopefully, agree. you know, don't bring him up in the beginning, but if we can get him sometime for like half the movie, that would be ideal for me. Because I just, I don't want it to be a total waste because I'm looking so forward to seeing Henry Cavill again. And then to know that, oh yeah, you probably got to wait another two or three years to see, you know, Man of Steel 2. That's going to suck. Yeah. I really hope we get more of him than less of him. Yeah, I, I hope that we get him around the second act of the movie. I think that, that that's a good place to bring him back. And uh, and who knows, maybe we will get him back, but we might not see him interact with them until later on. I mean, who knows how they're going to... I think it will be something like that. Maybe something of a bit of a like soul-searching type thing with Superman. He already kind of came out and, in a way, put himself in exile. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just to think and make a decision about what he really wants to do. And obviously he's going to come to the conclusion that he's going to be Superman. But I would probably prefer that if he's actually kind of around and doing his own thing, even at the beginning of the movie. That would be uh, probably preferred. Yeah, same. I agree. So all of that DC news out of the way, quite a few things and big shakeups in the uh, last week. So now we can move on to some Star Wars news and plow through these last couple topics. So we have an official title for Ryan Johnson's Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Um, we'll talk about that title specifically, but also Mark Hamill had some things to say about the title. And he, he was just making a comment about when Ryan told him what it was going to be. And he says, he told me when we were making the movie and I said, don't tell me these things. I talk in my sleep, you know, just very Mark Hamill fashion. So they have us so jacked up with paranoia over leaks, but that's the way of the world. It's funny because... Back when we were making the original, nobody cared. I mean, Star Wars was such an unknown thing back in 1977. Nobody gave a fuck that it was being made. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, fast forward, 2017, episode eight, episode 8 is coming out. Yeah, it's definitely a big deal. But he, about the title itself, he said, it's got a real samurai feel. It's straightforward and minimalist, and I like that. So what do you make of The Last Jedi? Do you think that that's referring to more Rey, more Luke, or could it just be referring to the last group of Jedi, even, that Luke was training? Uh, I mean, I think, again, you know, Disney's also really good at being cryptic in their titles and announcements, but uh, there's a lot of evidence for everything, really, because, I mean, you know, Return of the Jedi, Yoda tells them, uh, the last of the Jedi you will be once I'm gone, and then even in The Crawl of The Force Awakens, it says, you know, trying to find Luke Skywalker, the last Jedi. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, there's that whole thing. It's like, oh, it could be plural. And I think that throughout the film, you're going to see him and Rey together, and they will be the last Jedi. That's what I would hope for. Yeah, I'm hoping because, okay. Do you think it would be too obvious? Do you think they would not be that dumb to name it the last Jedi? Meaning that no way Rey is dying. They're not going to do that. Yeah. Not mm-hmm. in this one. So would they be dumb enough to make a title and, you know, insinuating that Luke is going to die? Uh, I think that they want to create that paranoia within us. I, I think that they're going for that. Like, they want us to think, like, oh, oh God, is Luke going to die? Like, what's going to happen? Well, and- even Return of the Jedi, you think it's about Luke coming back. And it's made to, you know, go that way with Han's been captured for so long. Luke comes back and he reunites with Leia and they go on about it. But the movie, the title is referring to Darth Vader. Yeah. The, the Return of the Jedi is Anakin. But do you think with, you know, The Last Jedi, I'm hoping it's plural. I, you know, it's funny you bring that up because, I mean, this is just pure, I'm going to pure, I'm going to speculate for a second. Speculate away. Speculation, it would be crazy if Rey gets turned to the dark side and Luke is once again the last Jedi. Because for some reason, the only reason that that really sticks with me is because, like, a, a, lot, a lot of the themes in the last movie is trying to bring Kylo into the light, bring Kylo into the light. Well, I think in this movie, it's going to be about trying to bring Rey into the dark. Because last time Luke tried to train a bunch of Jedi, look how that turned out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think uh, what we're going to see is everyone's going to assume, like, all right, Rey and Luke are going to be the last Jedi. And even Luke's going to bring up the fact that 
for the longest time I thought I was the last Jedi, but turns out, you know, you can be the last Jedi with me, and then all of a sudden, she's not. She's with the dark side, and Luke, again, is the last Jedi. I mean, to me, that would just be sort of like a tragic, almost Shakespearean mm -hmm. way of putting the emphasis on this guy is our last Jedi. But I don't know. Again, pure speculation. Uh, th I think that that would be, I mean, as controversial and as uh, non-traditional that would be to take the franchise in that route, it would most certainly be interesting to see. I think the title is just, uh, it's ambiguous enough to, to leave so much speculation open. Oh yeah, they, they want us to speculate. They, they want us to you know, go in there with all these theories, hoping what's going to happen, and then completely just blow us away. Exactly. And I, and I like that this episode eight is the first Star Wars movie to resume where the last one ended. Yeah. I mean, from Rey handing him the lightsaber, that's exactly where we're picking up in episode eight, which is totally new to Star Wars. And also the red text of The Last Jedi. What the hell does that mean? Every <laughs> Star Wars movie has had yellow subtext. Mm -hmm. and now we've got red. And, you know, with any other movie doing this, you wouldn't think much of it. But that really stands out on that Star Wars poster mm -hmm. and what that could mean. And I'm hoping that it's not just a Yoda thing where she's going to learn from him. But I want Luke to come back. I want him to be a Jedi master, go up against Kylo Ren or something. Oh, dude, If the, the moment he ignites a lightsaber, I'm going to lose it. And he better have that green one. He oh, better yeah. have the one from Return oh. of the Jedi. But, you know, yeah. he's exiled himself. And I hope they take a page out of what used to be in Star Wars Legends with the Jedi Academy games where after the Return of the Jedi, Luke started up a new Jedi Academy on Yavin 4. Which, that's basically what kind of happened between 6 and 7, wherever he ended up doing it. Whether it was on that planet, I don't think so because, yeah, Kylo Ren already was with them. He killed the other Jedi as we see in that flashback. So wherever he is now is where he's simply just exiled himself to where no one can get to him. But I, I'm i still kind of going with Rey used to be a Jedi, uh, maybe a youngling back at his old academy that he was training. And he sent off all the younglings, wh whoever he could, whatever survivors, to get them out there and wipe, wipe their minds of any Jedi training that they had. That's what I'm hoping. But I do like that he says it has a samurai feel and it's straightforward and minimalist. Yeah, me too. Um, especially the samurai thing because that's, you know, the total thing of what Jedi are based off of. Mm -hmm. They're very much like the samurai and they're very much like monks with everything that they believe with the force. And they're just their philosophy is very monk-like. But as far as the militarization of what Jedi are, they're very much like samurai. And The Last Jedi, I, this, this movie could be almost like a seven samurai type of feel or like a 47 ronin type of story where you know he he, he was the master of the samurai and these mm -hmm. other ones i want them to bring more jedi back i don't want there to just be like one and two all throughout these movies forever yeah because some of the coolest stuff of star wars lore like the clone wars the tv show which i just started watching again it's it's nice to see you know all the other kinds of jedi and especially knights of the old republic when there was an, an, you know, a thriving Jedi army, a thriving Sith army, I hope we can go in that direction with whether we're bringing back the, the Knights of Ren, what are they going to be, um, are they all Sith, can they all use lightsabers, and I want to see hopefully some students that survived, or for all we know, this movie could be about Rey convincing him to come back out, and the two of them go and find whatever Jedi survived. Mm -hmm. that would be awesome who knows i mean just so much speculation we're gonna have to i guess move on from that just because we're gonna have to really wait for some more news and unfortunately we're not getting any kind of teasers or trailers for any of these uh at the super bowl that's coming up yeah and like and the, the hilarious thing is is literally all we know about this movie is like it's called star wars the last jedi but here we've been talking about it as if we've known everything that's going to happen, but literally all they release is, hey, it's called The Last Jedi. <laughs> and yep. It's just yeah. crazy. It's crazy how much speculation Lucasfilm can cause with just a title announcement. Just, It is so awesome just how much Star Wars has influenced pop culture to where everyone can just lose their minds like this. It's definitely a uh, great time to be alive as far as being a Star Wars fan. Oh, yeah. And just... They, they were able to do so much with just the idea of Luke coming back. Because I think that's 
really what's piquing everybody's interest is the end of The Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. I, that's the main reason anyone's going to go see this next movie. On top of, yeah, it's Star Wars. The last two have been great. So, mm-hmm. of course, they're going to go want to see the other ones. But after The Force Awakens, the big question in Episode Eight is, how is what is Luke's relation to Rey? Just how do they have any sort of connection? That's the mm-hmm. big question. Oh, yeah. So they're definitely going to answer that, and I'm really excited to uh, see what's going on with it. Hopefully we get a trailer soon. I mean, we're 10 months out. We're... Yeah, uh, Celebration is in April, and I think we might get it around there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would put us, um, you know, around eight months out. That's definitely time for a first full trailer. Mm-hmm. You know, we still haven't got a first full trailer for Justice League, and that's um, nine nine months out. Yep. Yeah. So, and th- they're doing their marketing campaign, which again, this also instills confidence for me. They haven't marketed the DC films the same way they did for Dawn of Justice or Suicide Squad. Thank this God. is a little more like Man of Steel, where it was more reserved marketing, which is necessary because we were we were getting things for Dawn of Justice three years before we got that teaser. We were getting images, all these photos that Clay Enos and and Zach were taking getting a build-up for three years and now we're less than a year out and we don't really know too much about justice league which is far better and even closer to wonder woman and i think we have the two trailers but they're not so far nothing's been spoiled so Mm -hmm. hopefully they can keep going with that and just keep marketing that the way that they have been yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm really happy that they haven't, um, you know, blew their load with the marketing as they've done before. Mm-hmm. Because, like, for a while there, Warner Brothers was just like, we got the best trailer, ha! And then their movies came out, and people were like, what's a good trailer when, you know, <laughs> your movies are critically failing? And so I think they, I think that, that that's the first good, uh, the first correct lesson that they learned is, hey, there's more to this than just awesome trailers. We need to go easy and make sure that people are going into the movie like I am shocked like if you would have told me like last year like hey we're in the same year that Justice League comes out and there hasn't been a trailer with Superman in it yet I wouldn't yeah. have believed you because <laughs> that's so, the scary thing they better not spoil that in a trailer and I'm scared they will honestly yeah. oh I mean but I think by the time we get to the third trailer I mean even if they don't spoil it completely they might do that thing that X-Men Apocalypse did with Wolverine where it's just a quick like glance mm-hmm. maybe but I don't know I mean it just I hope they keep up what they're doing. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, you got five other characters and and side characters and villains to work with. You don't need to show Superman. They could do that. You know, the fake reveal where they all turn to look at him, but we don't get to see it. Even that, that would be fine. Yes. But you know, there was already enough problems with what happened with Dawn of Justice, and there there is no changing the fact that the one that most people saw was the theatrical release. Which even I could admit that it severely disappointed me. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I didn't really like it. There were, I mean, there was obviously some redeeming qualities. I think the ultimate cut is it's great, but that wasn't released in theaters, so the movie already has a bad rap. Unfortunately, yep. even if there is a better version out there, that's not the one that most people saw, mm-hmm. and it's really unfortunate. But I think that on top of the studios learning their lesson, Zack Snyder learned a couple of lessons off of Dawn of Justice. One, uh, don't write a story that needs to be three hours long and don't make that three hour long story rated R because then you're not going to be allowed to put it in theaters, Mm -hmm. which I think they were a little more uh, strict as far as what the producers are like, like your script reading needs to be around two and a half hours, Mm -hmm. like keep this PG-13 and I think that he knows that Um, also that he knows he, he, after the set visit, both him and his wife, Deborah they've acknowledged that people don't want to see their superheroes deconstructed. Mm -hmm. That's not what most people like. And, but I understand why he was going that route because unlike the traditional route for most typical stories or even blockbusters, he likes the idea that you, you can take your character to a darker place early. So then there's actually there, you can progress from there. Mm -hmm. It kind of the opposite of what, I guess Marvel did with building up to something like Civil War where the tensions just kept rising and rising and rising. We've already seen these characters individually at the darkest points in their lives with 
I mean, it was basically a midlife crisis for Batman and Superman. And yeah, it was. In their own individual ways. Mm-hmm. Like, with, with Batman handling the idea that Superman even exists, let alone what he did. And Superman having to deal with the way the world thinks of him. He's just not appreciated. He doesn't know what he should be doing with all this power. It was a crisis of conscience for both of them. Mm-hmm. So you can progress your characters from there. And just based on the comments that Zack has made for Justice League, it sounds like he's learned and he knows what we want to see, and we aren't going to see those those tropes again in this movie. Yeah. So hopefully we can just keep up with that. And again, don't spoil Superman in a trailer. Yes. So moving on, just some quick thoughts. We can... Uh, I would have loved to have talked about more movies, some upcoming releases for February, um, but I don't think you guys want to hear about Rings or Fifty Shades Darker. So, of course, the big two that we have are uh, John Wick 2 and Lego Batman. Uh, so what do you make of these? Well, first of all, John Wick Chapter 2. When the first John Wick came out, I the saw Bobby this. Yaga. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name drop one of my buddies. I saw this movie with Ryan Biggs and his dad. And we were originally going to go see Nightcrawler because it came out at the same time. Mm. And we were stoked to see Nightcrawler. And halfway there, his dad goes, hey, can we see John Wick instead? And me and Ryan had never heard of it. Like, we were like, what? what is that? And then his dad was like, oh, uh, it's got uh, Keanu Reeves in it. And we're like, okay, he's cool, but like, what, what is it? Like, we've been talking about <laughs> wanting to see Nightcrawler all day. And he goes, okay, can, just, can you just do this for me? And I'm like, and we were like, uh, oh, okay, we'll see John Wick, whatever. And I saw John Wick, and from like the first 15 minutes, I just looked at Ryan's dad in the theater. I was just like, thank you. Like, what I'm a wonderful so happy decision. That, I'm so happy that we came to see this because, my God, that movie was such a surprising action powerhouse. Like, it I like the gun fu. That, that was just so simple, but did it in the best possible way. I am stoked for John Wick Chapter 2. I hope that it doesn't turn into the Taken franchise. I hope that it continues to be as awesome and in- inventive as it was. And the thing about it is not only was the action great, it had good world building. In an it original did. script, there Very was Very rich building. mythology of the, you know, the hitman and assassin culture. It, yes. it was original. And that's one of the things that I really like about it is that the John Wick was better a hitman movie than the last two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have... Uh, I wasn't as fortunate as you that I got to see this in theaters. I waited until Blu-ray. I mean, I just kept hearing good things. I mean, it was like the sleeper hit of last year. I mean, it had next to no promoting or marketing. I think it had the two trailers, and it was just people like, oh, okay, it looks cool. I mean, Keanu Reeves is back. I mean, I enjoy Keanu Reeves. I like a lot of the stuff that he's done. And, then, I mean, John Wick coming back. And with Chapter 2, he's going to be reuniting um, with Morpheus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, um, and, really, and again, this is another movie that's uh, that had co-directors because one of them is uh, going to be doing Deadpool. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I really hope that there's a Matrix joke. And uh, I feel be- like there's no way that they won't, <laughs> because <laughs> it's these are it. I can't quite call it a serious movie. I mean, it takes itself seriously, but it mm-hmm. it still manages to have fun. I mean, yeah. it's fun in the absurd violence that mm-hmm. it has, and like when they hired the guys that they pay in gold coins to clean up all the bodies. Like, it's just such a what the fuck, like really funny. I I love the culture of, of these hitmen and going to the continental hotel Mm -hmm. where they all stay at. Like you got to stick to business, no fighting, no killing. Um, really looking forward to that. It created like its own little comic book world and it was awesome. Exactly. I I mean, I can't wait to see it. That's definitely uh, up there. Um, I think that comes out. Um, sometime within the next two weeks, along with Lego Batman. Oh, so, so pumped for this. Oh, man. It, yeah, and I think all the uh, DC fans, you might as well just prepare yourself for every <laughs> headline about the Lego Batman being the best Batman film in the last five years, about oh, you, how much better no, it is than you Dawn of Justice. That that's and, what they're going to do. Oh, man. And, like... <laughs> Just prepare yourselves, everyone, because it's going to happen. And the thing is, every like bit of footage I see from Lego Batman, I get more excited just because their their jokes are going to be so great. Like, I don't know if you saw a recent clip, but uh, like apparently Batman has a thing for Barbara Gordon in this movie, and yeah. he sees her and like and he's love struck. And then Robin comes up and is like, "Hi, lady," and then she goes, "Is that your son?" 
And he goes, no, 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 that'd be weird. And she goes, it'd be weirder if it wasn't your son. I'm yeah. Like, yes. I can't get I can't get over Daniel Sarah as Robin. <laughs> so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, Mike. Just everything that Michael Sarah does, he's just so like he seems like the awkward guy that accidentally walked onto the set, and he's like action. He's like what? And he has to exactly. Like, it. And the thing with Lego movies is like they can be they can be very meta, and they can kind of break the fourth wall with the jokes that they make to the audience. Like I mean, I I feel like this is still going to be. I mean, it's a continuation of the Lego movie. It's just going to be Lego Gotham that also existed in that weird Lego multiverse. I don't think it's necessarily going to be in Will Ferrell's basement, but yeah. in that still same fictional reality, I, I bet we're going to see some characters from the first Lego movie bleed over into it. That would be um, awesome. That's mostly what I'm looking forward to. And and uh, the director, I think, is uh, Chris McKay. He was recently asked on Twitter, like, what well, would you be interested in doing any live action DC films after Lego Batman? And interestingly enough, he said that he's actually going to meet with Jeff Johns and the Warner Brothers execs uh, this week to discuss uh, a pitch. Now, I, it's hard to say because I don't know what else he's done. And we don't know that the Lego Batman is even going to be good. I think they're doing press screenings this weekend. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be hearing about it. Uh, the embargo lifts fairly early. So we'll hear how the Lego Batman was. So I can't really comment too much on the idea of him pitching an idea because they already have kind of a slate laid out mm -hmm. or unless he's pitching an idea for a character that's already on the slate, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, you never know with Warner Brothers slate, it kind of constantly changes anyway, so we'll see. Yeah, I just can't get over some of the reactionary shit that they've done with, mostly after Suicide Squad. I mean, you had your whole slate and then all of a sudden... Uh, talks of like doing a Deadshot movie and Gotham or a City solo Sirens. Harley Quinn movie and now we have Gotham City Sirens mm -hmm. and Suicide Squad 2 with the idea of a solo Deadshot movie we don't need that no. we don't need a solo Harley Quinn movie or even a solo Joker movie I mean I would have been totally okay with Suicide Squad 2 which is happening and that makes sense but you know having a Deadshot movie after that purely because he's Will Smith uh, just give me a break I mean I liked him he was a great as Deadshot, but I, we don't need a Deadshot movie. Like, get moving on Superman. Make the yeah. fucking su <laughs> the second Superman movie. Get going on Green Lantern and The Flash. Get that shit together. Yes, I, Nobody cares about Deadshot. <laughs> you have all these other Justice League characters that you can be making a movie for, and you are wasting resources and time doing shit like Suicide Squad and Deadshot. I yeah, was hell. so pissed when I, I heard the initial report that... Uh, Suicide Squad was going to be like the third movie they're doing. Like, really? Of all the shit you can do, you're going to be pulling Suicide Squad out of your ass. Like, granted, yeah, that's cool. It made money, but that was also, it ended up being a critical travesty, which I still think it's fun, but I can't say it's good. Yeah. I had a good time watching it, but even David Ayer made those comments where, like, I wish I could go back in a time machine mm -hmm. and make the Joker, the, the main villain, make a more grounded story. Even he regrets every big problem about that movie, and he admitted it. Yeah, and uh, I'm happy he admitted it, but I'm with you. Like when they were like, "And our third movie is," and I was like, "Oh, they're like Suicide Squad," and I was like, "Why?" Yeah. Uh, but like, honestly, they need to. Get, I agree with you. They need to get their heads out of their asses, and they, they okay, give us Martian Manhunter. A am, am I the only one around here who wants to see Martian Manhunter? <laughs> I at least understand that Martian Manhunter would be used in a similar way as like falcon or black yeah. widow but even that i mean i because he would be like a side character i mean we don't know what's going to really happen in justice league with all the rumors of green lantern showing up in there i think martian manhunter is someone you slit you save for justice league 2 um who knows really that just i i see what you're saying with martian manhunter but mm. i mean suicide squad whatever especially when you know batman's only in it for 10 fucking seconds yeah, and also, uh, I saw this hilarious meme, and it had uh, uh, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and Suicide Squad. It said, now picture if the Marvel did the same thing with their first three films, and it had Iron Man, Civil War, and Guardians. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and like all the jokes aside, like I totally get that. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'll still argue that Man of Steel and the Ultimate Cut were, were that there was strong foundation to build off of and then oh. suicide squad which is 
it's acknowledged even among movie fans and and even fans of the DCU that Suicide Squad is clearly the weakest of all three of the movies. That's yeah. pretty recognized. And, and like, then you have all this stuff coming out with the Razzies. I mean, the Razzies is not a legitimate anything. It's no. tackle the highest profile actors and what was the most popular thing to hate on. And it's like, how did Suicide Squad manage to weasel its way out of the Razzies and get nominated for a fucking Oscar and then Batman v Superman gets nominated for all the Razzies. Yeah. And uh it's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh also like 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 you said, like the Razzies, they're just, you know, fun, whatever, nothing nothing too serious. But I uh, I agree with you though that I when Man of Steel came out, I was raving to everyone how much I love that movie. And then I looked on the internet, and it's like, well, half the people hate that movie. And I, I was very surprised. Cause like I mean, I understand some people's criticisms of it, but it's a good movie. Like every, like I've watched that movie and tried to hate it. Like I've, I've literally watched that movie and said, okay, I'm gonna put myself in the mindset of people who don't like it, and I couldn't not like it. Well, I like that movie. It's good, and I agree with you that the ultimate cut is good. I mean, it's still not the perfect movie everyone wanted it to be, but it's way better than the theatrical bullshit. It, so it, yeah, it's almost stupid how much better it is, and yeah. and I felt like the ultimate cut was a better representation of what they promised from the Comic-Con trailer, mm -hmm. which was the first full-length trailer that they had for Donner Justice after that teaser, or, you know, the Do You Bleed, like, like when that got known, and they had that, like, three-and-a-half-minute Comic-Con trailer, it was like, that was one of the best trailers ever fucking made. Ever, 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 I agree. And I can look at that and then watch the ultimate cut and be more than pleased because I felt like that's how it was represented. Mm -hmm. And even Man of Steel, I mean... Even though that one gets a little more flack, it's still the best received critically and audience. I mean, it's got a 75% audience score. Yeah. I mean, it's three quarters of the audience that liked it. And it's and it's built an even bigger following since its release. It's mm -hmm. one of the best-selling Blu-rays of all time. Like, mm -hmm. clearly that one was fine. Man of Steel was fine. But it's just like, man, they need to get their stuff together. But yeah. we're going to have more to rant on these DC properties. And, again, both of us, we like these movies and we want you know, the franchise to do well. Like, don't yep. mistake us for hating on it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. there's been a lot of, there's just been so much bad news coming out that we're going to have to comment on it. And guys listening, I mean, you, you can't just hear bad thing after bad thing and be okay with it. It's just getting frustrating at this point because we want them to do well. The, the, the DCE right now is like that one friend you've had since you were eight years old. And no matter what he does, you're always going to be his friend. And it's like, <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to explain to people like, look, really, once you get to know him, he's fine. Then he goes around and robs a liquor store and you're like, dude, come on, you got to get your shit together for everyone. <laughs> exactly. It is it is still salvageable. But guys, comment your thoughts down below. We're going to be wrapping this up. What do you make of all this news surrounding the Batman with Chris Terrio coming on board? What do you make of getting a new director? Who would you like to see be directing it? And what do you make of the Star Wars Episode Eight title? So anyways, guys, this has been Tyler and Dalton. And we will see you guys next week. We're going to try to make this a Monday and Tuesday type of show. Um, luckily, we at least had two big stories come out in the last two days. So we got to cover that. So we got lucky. But again, this is a newer thing. Going to be trying to do the podcast. And we'll try to get that out at the beginning of every week. So we can let some news pile up over the week and the weekend. But anyways, guys, this has been your Movie Fix. Be sure to subscribe. And we'll get more movie news, movie reviews, and trailer breakdowns. Hopefully coming up with all these big movies. And I'll see you on the next podcast.